says, my shirt say gold. <laughs> Greatest of all time. <laughs> what shirt stand for? Everyone, as you're joining on, join in. Join in. Somebody say curry gold. Blessings to you, everyone. I want to share something just for seven minutes on there. Make sure that you got your notepad and you keep these things in your heart. It'll give you wisdom in the future. Give you wisdom in the future. You know, your whole life is God giving you wisdom. Your whole life. You look at your life, God is increasing your wisdom. Every moment, every day, every experience, he giving you new wisdom. If you look at your life today, in this month of uh, August, you'll see that your wisdom has increased. Especially those of you all, how many of you all have been following me? You can say that your wisdom have increased on this line. How many of you all, you, you can testify that you see things different. Why? Because your wisdom is increasing. Oftentimes, God uses our experiences to increase our wisdom. And to cause our wisdom to become more sharp, more stronger. For you to be able to deliver someone with the wisdom that he gives to you. What I'm doing on this line right now, just briefly, is delivering you from the wisdom I've acquired from the Holy Spirit. If you are a woman or a man on here, you can take this to the bank. What I'm about to share with you. Look for the fear of God in people. Anybody that does not fear God, it doesn't matter how much. Your natural mind believes that that person is safe. They're not safe. Those that do not fear God are very dangerous people. Very dangerous. They're dangerous to your future. They're dangerous to your atmosphere. They're dangerous to your love. A lot of times you will invest love into people that don't fear God. And it will affect you greatly. The fear of God is a major quality that you want to look for in people. A lot of times, saints, if we be honest, we like people because they seem to be likable. We like people because we see what they can become. We like people because we know that the hand of God is merciful towards them and he wants to bless them. But if they do not fear God, it is still a dangerous place. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So if someone does not fear God, they will not be wise. They will be very foolish. They will make foolish decisions. The Bible tells us in Proverbs to forsake foolishness and live. But not everyone will forsake foolishness in this life. There will be a percentage of people that have a soul tie with foolishness. If someone does not fear God, it's impossible for you to create a future with them. It's impossible. It's impossible. I have, I have myself in my lifetime. God has had me so graciously help people. And then the next day I would experience a backlash from the same person that I helped. 
I'm qualified to tell you these things that I'm telling you. Some of you are in a relationship right now. And some of you are, you may not tell me, but you wondering, is this my husband? Is this my wife? Is this my future business partner? Is this somebody that I should pursue this business idea with? Should I take this contract? Should I walk into a relationship with this girlfriend? Is she safe to be around me as me as a woman, as I am a venturous woman? Should I trust her? I'm going to tell you this and take this to the bank. If someone does not fear God, there is no future with them. The fear of God is what causes peace. The fear of God is what causes longevity. Now, here's the thing, saints. When you fear God, the only thing that you can do is what David did. He said, let me teach you the fear of the Lord. You can only teach the fear of God. You can't impart it. I wish I can tell a lot of men of God because I know men of God that have gone crazy from their experiences with people. I know men of God that are wounded today and I understand them fully because of their encounters with people that mishandled them. I know men of God. I know them that have been dramatically affected by the encounters that they have had with people that shocked them. When we fear God, we expect people to fear God as well. So as men of God, we're not really thinking that someone has the audacity to not fear our God when we know him so closely. Because before we get anointed, we go through things. We see him. We experience him in such a fearful way before the power of God even rests on me. Even before I minister to the sick. Even before I pray for someone that is demon possessed, even before I prophesy, even before I do something, even in my ministry, I feel a godly fear that comes upon me. One time, I was, we was driving to, uh, uh, we was driving to a place, and right before my service, my car was taken around in the glory of God. I have, we, we have footage of it. Right before my service, right before the time of the service. And the Lord prophesied to me and told me that I'm letting you see what's going to happen in the next Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, which we saw the glory of God very strong in that meeting. We saw the glory of God increase very heavily in that meeting. But what the Lord did was show a visible sign where my the physical vehicle was taken up by the glory of God. And there was such a fear. Because the closer you get to Jesus, the fear you have. That's, that's how you know who is close to Jesus. Because when people don't fear him, they're not close to him. They're far off. Saints, Jesus ministered to thousands and millions of people, but the larger percentage of people was far from him. The closer you get to God, the more your fear increases. And it's the fear of God that restrains us from doing things. Let me give you a secret. Be at peace. Because you're going to meet people in this life that do not fear God. Therefore, they are going to do things to you without any conscience. They are going to fight you with no conscience. They are going to hurt the heart of God with no conscience. Saints, me as a man of God, 
my greatest dissatisfaction is that mankind can hurt God and not even care about it. Men are so selfish. Jesus can deliver our life from so many things, but when it comes to us returning the favor back to him, we are so disrespectful. I've heard everything in the book said to me. I've heard everything in the book. I've heard people call me names that I never thought as a little boy I would be called. I've heard people even say to my face things that I never knew that somebody could not fear God to that degree to say. I'm telling you as a wise man, be very cautious who you let in your life that don't fear God. If they do not fear God, they will be the most dangerous person you ever met. There are so many women today that have been traumatized by men that didn't fear God. There are so many men today that are traumatized because they met a woman that did not fear God. Can you imagine Samson was blind? He could not see anymore because he met somebody that did not fear God. This man went from breaking off all the chains that the Philistines put on him. And because he met somebody that did not fear God, now he is a slave. Now he lost his eyesight. Now he don't even got the same relationship with God that he had before he met the person. Because he met somebody that did not fear God. This is more serious than you know in 2018. Because we're going to meet people that do not fear God. And the crazy thing is that when you meet somebody that do not fear God, you can't let them make you miss God because they're missing God. You have to guard your fear of the Lord and say, Lord, I see this. It won't be me. I'm not going to do it to you. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm, I'm not going to grieve you. I know you've been good to me, but I'm going to respond to you with goodness. I know that you've been faithful to me. I'm going to respond to you with faithfulness. I know that you've been merciful to me. I'm going to respond to you with mercy. I'm going to give you an opportunity to be God in me. I'm not going to do what everybody else do. What distinguishes me in my league is that I refuse to respond to Jesus in a way that Jesus did not respond to me. Give God a harvest with your life, with your responses. Give God a harvest with how you function. Give him a harvest with your gratitude. Give him a harvest with your attitude. There is no future with someone that does not fear God. You meet so many people, you see them on social media, you think that they save, you think that they anointed, you think that they love God, you think that they fear God. The Holy Spirit said this to me today. He said, son, I understand that in your generation, a lot of people talk about the spirit of divination in the form of a man. He says, son, I know that your generation talk about preachers as far as the, in the form of a man having the spirit of divination. But he says, son, if you look at the scriptures in Acts, he said it was a little girl that had the spirit of divination. It was a female. It was a woman that had false honor towards God, but didn't really fear God. You as a woman must be very careful that you don't have a spirit of divination. That you're not just praising God because of eye service and because of other reasons. But you're truly praising God because you're humble and you fear him and you know that he's worthy of the praise. And you want to make him happy. Because see, fakeness don't last long. If you fake, you won't last long. 
You only will do things for a time. And see, a lot of times God reveals to us our heart because we don't got no longevity. And it's the Holy Spirit showing us, listen, your heart was lying to you. Your heart was lying to you because what happened was you appeared like you was all the way in praise and worship and thanksgiving and honor and humility, but it won't last. Saints, a lot of times people, they say, well, how come this person was this way, but now they became this? You know why? Because they was this all along. You just saw what they was presenting to you for a time. This is who they really are. When we see this, we wonder, well, that is what I have been seeing. But now this is what I see because this is who they really are. In relationships, you're going to have to search for the quality of the fear of God in a man and in a woman. Because without the fear of God, you have just met the most dangerous person in your whole life. Number two, when people do you wrong and become evil towards you, they agree with every other person that have done you wrong and have been evil towards you. There's some of you all, you have been through experiences and you've never been able to interpret it. I'm speaking to you as a wise man. When people... start to agree with who murdered you in the past, with who crucified you in the past, it is a revelation that you have met the most dangerous person in your life. The fear of God is a quality to let you know who you can keep in your future. If someone does not fear your God, they're not going to get along with you because you are the way in. You love Jesus with all your heart. You love the Holy Spirit. That's why you give your body, soul, and spirit over to serving him. But if you are around somebody that don't fear God, there's no future with that person. See, oftentimes, people like you because you got natural sides to you. They love that rather. They love you because of you got natural sides. But when you step into the spirit of God and the spirit of God take over your life, your schedule, your decisions, this is when you're going to know what's in people's hearts. Jesus had a way of bringing out a people what was locked up in them. They did not let nobody know. Nobody knew. They thought that they was Pharisee leaders. They thought that they were Sadducee leaders. Some of them looked like they was prestigious, holy men. Some of them wore long robes. Jesus had a text where he began to laugh at their long robes and how they sat in the front of the church and how they made themselves look so high esteemed and so clean and so pure and so righteous and so uh, 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 wonderful. But then Jesus knew what to say. To bring the demon out of them. Jesus began to say you dress up on the outside. But your inside. Is dead man's bones. The fear of God. Is what's going to keep you safe in relationships. A lot of times. Who you see is not who you see. The more you obey God, you'll find out what's in people. If they have the Holy Spirit in them, they'll be at peace. If they have demons in them, they'll be at war. Our whole life is a revelation of what spirit is inside of us. Our whole life is a revelation. God will let you see what spirit is leading you. 
the children of Israel, all of them didn't know that they had another spirit in them. But Moses was used by God to show them that there was another spirit inside of them. They themselves were crying out to God. They themselves were seeking God, but they did not know that they had other spirits inside of them. When Moses began to move with God stronger and stronger, the demons started manifesting through them. It wasn't until Moses moved in the glory cloud. It wasn't until the intensity of the presence of God. This is what some of you all need to catch. That the further you go with Jesus and the more you let him take you over, the more you are going to be betrayed. The more that you're going to find out that people were not really alongside of Jesus in your walk. The further that you go with Jesus, you're going to find that people begin to drop off from your life. You're going to find that people begin to even turn against you in ways that you never thought. See, even the fear of God is so powerful that when you fear God, it's going to bring out things in people just through fearing God. A lot of times, saints, you wonder how in the Bible, when a demon saw Jesus, they'll say, Thou, Son of God, have you come to torment us before time? Always know that demons are experts with time. You know why they're experts in time? Because God never meant for there to be time. Time is something that demons are experts in. They know the time to hide. They know the time to manifest. They know the time. There are some people in your life. Hear me, daughter. Hear me, son. I'm telling you as a prophet of God. There are some people in your life right now as I'm speaking to you. That have not manifested themselves yet until the appointed time. Is a scary word, but it's necessary for you. And you're going to remember that I told you this. As a wise man that has lived in this for some time, I know what I'm talking about. The further you make steps to let Jesus take you over as a woman and as a man, you're going to find out who was demon possessed around you. Remember, you're not always going to see the demons in people because their level of demon demonology may not be at the level that you're at right now. Their level of demonog uh, de demonology might be at another plane. So you got to get to the next plane for that demon to come out. That's something that you need to think about. Apostle Paul says something real scary in the text. He said, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of their flesh. Why did Apostle Paul say deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh? Because this man had another level of demons. So even Apostle Paul said, hey, none of us that's anointed, we ain't going to fool with him. Oh, Jesus. Are you catching this, saints? Apostle Paul said, none of us that's anointed. I know all of us is carrying a strong anointing, but let's not fool with this person. Let us give them over to Satan. That's the only solution. Saints, the fear of God is going to decide who can stay in your life. And when people don't fear God, don't seek a future with them. Don't seek a future. Because anybody that does not fear your God, they are going to fight you. They're going to bring heartache and the demonic going to operate in your life just because of them. You can be in the fear of the Lord, love the Lord, so surrendered to God, but you still going to have to combat witchcraft through them. A lot of times... Even as parents, 
you're going to find that the Holy Ghost may disconnect you from your children. Why? Because your children don't fear God. So what God's saying, if you're going to make it as a parent, you're going to have to listen to me and follow me. Because if you listen to them, they got other spirits that's going to stop you from being the woman that I want you to be. And then you're going to end up in something that they are in because you let them take over your mind. You let them take over your perception. You let them take over the way that you see things. And now you are adapting to a satanic nature and the nature of God is being destroyed in you. It's something that you want to catch. If someone does not fear God, they're not safe for your life. People liking you is not enough. Because Judas liked Jesus. Liking is not safety. Liking is not protection. It's, the only, it's only the fear of God that is going to protect you in this life, in relationships. And when you fear God, don't let nobody remove your fear from God. Fear God even when people don't fear him. Fear God even when you see people don't have no respect for him. Even when you see people grieve the Holy Ghost, still fear God. Don't follow the jackass. We got a lot of jackass people in our generation. God can do so many things for them and they still jackasses. They trifling. I've never seen such an ungrateful generation. Holy Spirit can bend over knee and back for us and we don't even say thank you. We have such a wicked generation. Saints, the power of God is on Prophet Joshua Holmes, not because I'm in a good generation. The glory of God is so strong on me because we in a witchcraft generation. We in a generation that is so corrupt by sorcery and magic and deception and evil works, workers of iniquity. This is why the glory is so strong on me. It's not because we in a heavenly air atmosphere. It's because I'm in a demonic zone in this earth realm. This earth is full of the demonic and it's entering into people. I was telling my son. Right while I'm driving, I have a vision, not today, yesterday. And I saw scorpions biting people's head, entering, into, entering inside of them. And God told me, you know what the interpretation of the dream is? I told my son, I said, the interpretation of this vision that I'm having right now, this open vision, he said that these are demons that enter people's mind that rule their thoughts. And these are people that call themselves saved. These are people that say that they love God. But yet they're in covenant with Satan mentally. Remember, Jesus said, I give you power over the serpent and the scorpion. So if a scorpion is eating your head and he got access to your head, that means that your mind is underneath demonic powers. Saints, there's nothing that takes me off guard. Nothing. I see people way before they see themselves. I already know all things. There's nothing that takes me off guard. I know in my, my life, my ministry, everything that concerns me, I'm more in the sea of anointing concerning that than America. I... You notice, I don't really prophesy too much about America and the world because I ain't focused on all that stuff. The world going to be the world. Scripture must be fulfilled. But when it comes to my ministry and my territory and everything that uh, pertains to JHM, oh, um, my eyes. I can't miss. When God showed me that while I was driving, about the scorpion spirit. The scorpion spirit. What the scorpion spirit do is that people that are not operating in the fear of God, 
people that are not operating in the love of God will be taken out by the scorpion spirit. That scorpion demon will have power over them because they never yielded to the true power of God. I remember saying something to somebody. I remember some time ago, I said something to somebody and my words were, these were my only words. Don't be so close and still be so far. Don't be so close and still be so far. Over 99, over 100% of people in hell wish that they could change their decision. They're in hell now. They wish. They wish that they would have had listened to their prophet. They wish that they had been more sensitive when a man of God came to them and told them. So many people are in hell right now, as I'm talking here, that wish they had an opportunity that you have. So many people in hell today are hoping, wishing, imagine them being in hell right now for years. Some people have been in hell for 100 years now. Some people have been in hell for 200 years now. Some people realize that they're not coming out of hell, so now they're cursing God. They're blaspheming God because so much pain, so much anguish, so much torment, so much. They're in hell right now because of the prophet they did not listen to. That's why Abraham said, if this man going to, have his family saved, they have the prophets. But they're in hell now. Saints, when people don't fear God, dust your foot off. When they don't fear the Holy Spirit, you ain't got to explain yourself to nobody. Dust your foot off. A lot of times, we don't make decisions because we worried about what people say. Listen, you ain't got to explain yourself to nobody. You ain't got to listen to what nobody got to say about what, 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 you, what your decision is. You know what you know. And you ain't going to hell for no demon that don't fear God. When you see people don't fear God, dust your foot off. Bible said two was going to be walking in the field. One was going to be taken away. The other one was going to be left. The Bible let you know two going to be sleeping in the bed. One going to be taken away. One going to be left. The Bible told you that. See, if God was doing things off of association, both of them would have had got taken out of the field. Both of them would have had got taken out of the bed. But only one because God dealt with who feared God. We live in a very trifling generation. You'll see people all over the world praising God one minute, the next minute. They are the same people crucifying the son of God to an open flesh. Stop trusting everybody that look innocent. Innocence is not a look. Innocence is not a look. Innocence is not a look. Innocence is a lifestyle of purity before God. Innocence is not a look. We look at children and say that they're innocent. We look at older people and say they're innocent. We look at college students and say they're innocent. Innocence is not a look. Lucifer before tricking those one third of the angels. Lucifer had to look innocent. If Lucifer had looked like a criminal, one third of the angels would not have left God. If Lucifer had looked like a 
fugitive. One third of the angels would not have left God. If Lucifer had looked like a suspect, one third of the angels would not have left God. The reason why one third listened to Lucifer, Lucifer looked as if he was innocent. Innocence is not a look. Innocence is when I choose to fear God. If you don't fear God, you don't got no innocence. The fear of God is innocent. Hereby, you know that your heart is pure. Because you make a decision in this point in your life that you refuse to do what evildoers do. The Bible said, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of a wicked man. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs. Don't be envious of a wicked man. Choose none of his ways. If people don't have the fear of God, it don't matter what you do. It don't matter what you say. They are not God's friends. Saints, you can love somebody right into hell. I'm going to tell you that right now. Some of you all need to know this. You can love your parents right into hell. You can love your children right into hell. You can love your friends right into hell because they don't fear God. Even love doesn't change anybody. Love is just an opportunity to change. Love is not change. We often say that love can cure. Love is not a cure. There are so many parents that love their children, but their children are still disrespectful. Love is not a cure. Love is an opportunity to be cured. Love is an opportunity to be helped. And children will make their parents look bad and their parent can be the most working hard, most kind, most generous person. But their little child can sabotage them and make them look like witches when they are going head over heels for that child. And saints, this is why I'm telling you this, because when people don't fear God, it don't matter what you do for them. They still going to find a way to make you look bad. Oh, Jesus. Listen. I'm telling you right now, saints. It don't matter what you do for an evil child. They will still cry in public. If somebody asks them, why are you crying? They'll say, mom won't give me this snicker bar. It don't matter how you have fed that child, cleaned that child, loved on that child. That child will still make you look bad to other people. You could have been the only parent that raised up that child. That child will still make you look like your evil mother, your evil father. Because when people don't fear God, it don't matter what you do for them. They still going to carry out evil against you. Here's a wise man. And I'm warning some of you all. So that you won't have to go through the pain. I have gone through in this life. I'm warning you so that you won't have to go through the heartaches. That I go through in this life. People that don't fear God. Are not worthy of your access and do not seek a future with people that do not fear your God. Let me tell you this. Prophet Joshua Holmes is the most purest man, holiest man. You'll meet doing periscopes like this. You'll meet doing Facebooks uh, like this so rapidly. But yet the attacks that I have seen through people 
who God has shown his great and mighty love to has given me wisdom for your life. Jesus went through many things so that you would have the all. Men of God go through many things so that you can have the all as sons and daughters. He let the man of God go through stuff so that you can have all. And saints, I'm telling you today, I'm anointing your head with all. When people are not fearing God, know that they are dangerous. It don't matter how you think that they're innocent. It don't matter how it look like they're harmless. That is a snake. And a snake will always be a snake. People don't change. They get restrained by God. I know this as a man of God. People don't change. They just get restrained. The Holy Ghost stopped them because the man of God is pleasing God. And the Bible say when a man ways please the Lord, he make his enemies live at peace with him. But saints, people don't change. God just restrained them because that man of God is pleasing God. But there comes a time where Judas must fulfill Judas's ministry. God the Father restrained Judas because Jesus had to fulfill certain things. But when God took the restraint off, Judas was Judas. I'm telling you as a wise man. I'm telling you as your wise spiritual father on here that there are people in your life that God is restraining them because you're not there yet. But when you get there, he's going to take the restraint off for them to do what they want to do. I'm telling you as a man of God right now, and this one of the most powerful messages that you'll hear me say on this line, I'm letting you know that there are people in your life that don't truly have the love of God towards you. But God is restraining them until a time. Especially when they don't fear God. And you see that they don't fear God. They're being restrained by God for a time. When he take that restraint off of them. They're going to try to murder you. They're going to try to kill you. They're going to try to make you look bad. Because that's who they are. That's who they are. Saints. Listen, I done seen this in my life over a million times. Listen, if you want to hear this from anybody, I'm qualified to teach this to you. I'm anointed to teach this to you. There are people that God won't let them put their mouth on you because he restraining them. But when he take the restraint off, they going to say all type of evil about you for... The sake that you have given yourself over to Jesus. Bible said that the world going to hate you. There's a lot of people that's acting like they of the word, but they really of the world. And time will reveal them that they not of the word because they hate the word. I've heard so many people reveal to me that they hate Jesus. I've heard so many people. I've heard things that will shock you. These last couple years of my life. These. I, I can honestly say this. The last five years of my life. I've heard people say out of their own mouth stuff. The wisdom of God is helping you. So that you don't fall prey to these people. Because you know what? Anybody that don't want the gospel being preached. Anybody that don't want souls being saved is a demon. Anybody that don't want people being delivered from their sin. If you don't want that. Saints, only demons. Get angry when the gospel going forth. Only demons get angry when people are getting delivered. Only people that are in covenant with Satan get mad when somebody is being used by God to set others free. 
How could we say that God is behind us when we attacking the work of God? How can we say that it's God telling us to do it when we attacking the very same single thing while he sent us in the earth to do? We wasn't sent to the earth just to live in a big house. We wasn't sent in the earth just to drink what we want to drink and wear what we want to wear and have the money that we want to have. We were sent to preach the gospel and win souls to Jesus. And when you see people fight that, there's another spirit in them. When you see people go against that, there's another spirit inside of them. It's not the spirit of God. God has blessed me with so many things. But I labor more than anybody. See, Apostle Paul says something real powerful. And I understand why Jesus appeared to me and told me I give you the ministry of Apostle Paul, Prophet Elijah. Because Apostle Paul said something. He said, I was the chief of sinners. I am who I am by the grace of God. But he said, I, 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 I also labored. I also labored more than any other apostle. So here's what Apostle Paul was saying. Yes, I got here off of grace. Yeah, it was God being merciful to me. But listen, I also got the fruits. Of why I have a worthiness to walk the way I walk. I also got fruits to confirm why I should have this anointing. I also got the ability and the work ethic. To be qualified to have this mantle. See, Apostle Paul was saying, yeah, I am by I am by the grace of God is the ability of God. But also I'm doing my part as a recipient of this ability and I deserve to have it. I deserve to be disanointed. I deserve to be able to move in power. I deserve to demonstrate the kingdom because my work ethic is in line with the grace that has been given to me. See. Apostle Paul understood that there was people that was not. They received grace, but they're not worthy to have that grace because they're not even responding to God with that grace correctly. See, saints, what's so powerful is Apostle Paul knew that he had a great grace. But he also knew that there were people that had the same opportunity to have that grace, but they wasn't willing to be good to God. They wasn't willing to give their life back to God. They wasn't willing to fear God and make God their focus. They still was trifling with the grace. Pastor Paul was saying, yeah, he put this grace on me. But what you also need to see is that I'm working the works that this grace qualified me for. I work in the works. Evil people, they hate ministry going forth. They hate ministry. Some of you women on this line, you can't marry any type of man. You know why? Because you got ministry anointing on you. And that man going to try to cause trouble while you doing ministry. Some of you women on here, you don't understand. That's why God not letting you date every type of man. Because you got ministry on you. He going to stop you. He going to pit himself before you. He going to try to make Jesus on the back burner. When really it was Jesus that even brought y'all together. Some of you women, you wonder why God say that's not your husband. Because that man is not going to be in agreement with you ministering to Jesus. That man is going to fight you. He's going to hinder you. Sometimes God got to kill your husband because he don't want that man in your way. Ruth was being hindered by that man because that man was keeping her from Boaz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So God got to kill certain people and certain men not right to be in your life because they'll stop you from being connected to your Boaz, the man of God that has been sent to really deliver your life from working in that field of uh, that cotton field, that slavery. See? Some of you men on this line, you got ministry on you. That's why God won't let you marry any type of woman. 
because that woman going to try to exalt herself and pit herself before Jesus. She going to try to pit this sympathy thing like Jesus supposed to cater to her witchcraft self. That's the problem that we want to exalt ourselves above God and make ourselves idols. When it's really God who brought us into the life that we live. And we forget God. That's the problem. We got men and women that forget God. They forget that they're alive today because of God. But then when God blesses them, they don't want to do anything for him. We forget that if it wasn't for God, you would have died in that accident. You would have died in that house fire and you wasn't going to heaven. You would have got shot for real. You would have been in jail if it wasn't for God. So your life that you now live in the flesh must be by the faith of the son of God. And if it's not, will be unto you. I'm going to tell you, saints, this world that we live in is a wicked world. And don't give your trust away so easily. Just because you knew that girlfriend for three years don't mean that she really your girlfriend. Because for three years, you probably haven't been in the place with Jesus that you're supposed to be. You, as a man, you probably haven't been in that place of the anointing that you're really supposed to be. So you probably had a three-year demon just hiding in your presence. If someone does not fear God, you can't seek a future with them. And saints, you know what drains us is that we try to help people that don't fear God and we try to teach them and we try to nurture them and we try to make them feel like they can do it. But really in their heart, they don't intend to do none of that. See, see, here's the thing about us. When we fear God, we invest so much into people that don't fear God, hoping that they will catch the message and say, hey, I'm a change. But what you don't know is that you just wasting your time. You wasting your oil, you wasting your investment in somebody that don't really even care about Jesus. They don't care if the spirit of God is grieved. They don't care if the Lord is dissatisfied because they are not lovers of God. They're lovers of themselves. The Bible said in the last day, men was going to be lovers of themselves. They was going to love themselves, that their love was going to wax cold. It was going to grow cold, that they'll be murderers and traitors and disloyal to God. The Bible let us know that there was going to happen. And we in that generation right now where people love themselves. They don't love Jesus. It's not about the gospel no more. The Bible said, if any man may come on after me, let him deny himself. People don't want to deny themselves no more. Bible said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. People don't want to deny themselves no more. If you meet somebody that don't fear God, flee, flee, flee. That person is not going to be a friend of where Jesus is taking you. There are so many pastors today that they don't even have the power of God moving in their church. You know why? It's not because they're not anointed, but because they may be married to somebody that's not anointed. That person say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Pastor say, I got men to know I'm hungry right now. There are women that get suffocated in ministry because they marry a man that's of the world and the man is telling them, no, don't be talking about Jesus right now. I don't want to hear no Jesus. Now the woman is being suffocated from God. Now her desire is between a rock and a hard place. Should I love on Jesus? Or should I love on this man? He told me not to talk about Jesus. So should I love on him or should I love on this? Uh, love on Jesus or love on the man? You see how people suffocate you when they don't fear God. Adam made the most foolish decision to listen to a stupid woman. A stupid woman. Adam made 
the dumbest decision to listen to a foolish woman. The woman was not even authorized by God to say anything. And he listened to a stupid behind woman. I tell you sons on here, don't listen to no dumb woman. A lot of women try to rule you when you're in the anointing. Don't listen to the dumb woman. You rather have Jesus with you and lose that stupid woman than to have a stupid woman and lose Jesus. Some of you sons on here, I don't talk too much to you, but hear the words of your prophet. Hear me today as I'm talking on here. Don't listen to no dumb woman. A lot of women are Jezebelic. The Bible said in Revelation 2.20 that she calls herself prophetess. There's a lot of women that call themselves prophetess that are Jezebels. They don't know how to submit to their man of God. They are not worthy to have a voice. A lot of men give their wives too much platform. That's why their wives rebel against them. It, their wives need to learn how to cook. They need to learn how to clean. And they need to learn how to take care of the children. That's what women need to learn how to do. That's the ministry of being a help me. You sons on here, you hear what I'm saying? You, you hear what I'm saying? Huh? You hear what I'm saying on here? I'm letting you know. Look for a woman that's a true help me. She not just there, but she a helper. She help you with your vision. She help you with your assignment. You don't got to convince her to help you. It's in her heart. And some of you sons on here, if you got to pay your woman to be nice to you, just get you a prostitute. That's raw anointing. If, if you got to pay her to, to, to do stuff for you, just get you a doggone hoe. Because that's all hoes do. You got to pay them to be nice to you. You got to pay them so that they so that they can be dili nice and diligent. You know I'm being sarcastic, but I'm, I'm telling you. You need somebody that's a loyal partner with the vision that God has given to you as a woman, as a man. If you're a woman, you can't be with no man that don't want you to be happy and want, don't want you to have the, the blessing of God flowing in your life and have you enjoy things in life. You can't be with a man that's suffocating you all the days of your life. You need to know this stuff. You need to know this stuff. Because a lot of times, great people fall because of who they got in relationship with. It wasn't them. They had certain abilities. But watch they get in relationship. Whitney Houston. Yeah, she was up there in the world. But until she got with... You don't see her decline until she got into certain relationships. You see that. You see that. She was already a sinner, but the sin went to another level, to the level of destruction. When she got into relationship with certain people, they put a lid on her life, a greater lid. They suffocated her and she chose to agree with that. So it's not like they manipulated her to be suffocated. They chose to be suffocated as well. They, they, she agreed to be Satan's victim. So that was her decision. You as children of God, you don't make that same decision. Your job is to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That's your job. That's your job. That's your job. That's your job. You're going to meet people in this life that your goodness not going to change them. Your love not going to change them. Your anointing is not going to change them. Some people don't understand this. It don't matter how much you pray for that person. They'll still be demon possessed. God letting you know that there is no future with that individual. I'm telling you right now, daughter, son, I'm letting you know. When you encounter somebody that you done did everything for, you done help them, you done help them, you done help them. And they still are demon possessed. Know that there is no future with that person. That is a witch they in witchcraft and the witchcraft is so strong that they are not willing to change. So therefore, you be at peace 
you continue to fear God and you continue to follow the plan of God for your life and you get the will of God done with excellency, you don't turn your back on Jesus for nobody. You don't turn your back on Jesus for nobody. Not even family. Nobody come before Jesus. Nobody. Not even your children. Nobody come before Jesus. We have made our generation so witchcrafty because we have taught to pit other people before Jesus. Jesus even said in Mark chapter 10 verse 30, he said, you leave houses and lands, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, wives, children. Jesus didn't tell you to cater to nobody. Jesus said, leave all there behind if you got to do it to follow what I'm telling you to accomplish. That's what the Bible said. It didn't teach us to cater to somebody and up there make somebody feel good. If you don't feel good about the gospel, it's because you got demons on the inside of you. Therefore, you need to go to hell because heaven is not a place for you. The Holy Spirit. He raising up a wild generation. We're not going to be following all these protocols and what people got to say. We're going to follow what he tell us to do. And if you don't like it, kick rocks. We ain't begging nobody to stay in our life that don't love our God. If you don't love Jesus Christ, if you don't have no love for him, well, blessed be God. I, it ain't going to affect me none. People, people, you got to catch that they exalt themselves just like Lucifer. People do the same thing Lucifer did. Try to exalt themselves above God and say, hey, I'm greater than him. Pay attention to me. I'm greater than him. Look unto me. I'm greater than him. Do unto me. No. And saints, if anybody want to take you against serving Jesus in the will of God, they're not worth your life no way. Because that means that they got demon spirits and they hate God. And there's no reason for you to risk everything that God has given to you for some dumb behind spirit. Relationship tips. Look for the quality of the fear of God in people. Look to see how people are over time. Because anybody will give you a good presentation. Anybody can give you an appearance of righteousness. Over time, you will know. Over time, God will show you what's in people's heart. And number three with relationships, let Jesus possess you to the degree to know what spirit is in other people. Let Jesus possess you to the degree to know what spirit is inside of people. Because when he possess you, then you're going to start knowing what spirit people carried all along. You're not going to know until you let Jesus possess you. If you live this life where you're not all the way in, there's going to be so many people hiding in your life. But when you got the glory of God on you, people can't hide. They cannot hide. They can try to trick and, and listen about number four. You're going to meet a lot of cowards. I've met so many cowards in my life. They smile in your face and they plotting. And because I'm a prophet, I'm a confronter. I tell you to your face. I ain't got to hide. You, you see how these other preachers be going around acting like little sissies? They, they, they go hide and, and, and then they, they try to pit their mouth on you. Then they go hide. Nope. I tell you just like Nathan. I tell you to your face. I let you know. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this, this, and this, and this. And I'm never wrong. I'm never wrong. There are some people that hide from Prophet Joshua today because I went to them in secret and I told them the word of the Lord and they know that I was on point. Because I, I didn't have to expose it to the public. I had to mention the name to the public. I went in secret and told them to their face. I'm not like every, every other prophet. I'm not a new generation prophet. I'm the prophet of God that is possessed by Jesus that know the truth. And saints, you're going to meet a lot of cowards in your life. You're going to meet people that are cowards. They're smiling in your face. They're not telling you what their real intent are. They're not telling you what they're really planning to do against you. They're acting like all is well, but really they plotting. They got evil imaginations. 
They got evil strategies. They got evil things that they got locked up in them against you. That's what you need to see. Number four with relationship tips. You going to meet cowards. You going to meet people that's not honest with you. You going to meet people that's going to hide behind a face. Hide behind an action. But it's not real. And you going to have to know. How to discern in those moments. The Holy Spirit going to have to exercise your discernment to know who is really loyal to the assignment and the vision that's on your life. Number four and number five, with relationship tips, you going to have to ask God for wisdom in your decisions because wrong people will always give you wrong advice and they'll mess up what God intended for you to originally do. You're going to have to get the wisdom of God because when people come and tell you things that God don't want you to do, you will end up doing it because you like the person and you're trying to keep them in your life and then you mess up your anointing, you mess up your favor with God and you lose your position in the glory by listening listening to a liar. That's number five. You're going to have to ask God for wisdom and understanding because evil people will go and give you evil instructions and evil advice and make you miss God. Then you lose your position with God. Now God don't even fight for you no more. You lost your position with God. You're going to have to ask God for wisdom and understanding. Saints, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a very evil generation. Some of you are not really cautious of that. You don't pray in the Holy Spirit. You need to pray in the Holy Spirit more. You need to spend more time uh, in the word of God because a lot of times you up there think that people is this and that and they up there got all type of spirits that been sent to destroy your life. If you're not in the place where God wants you to be, you're going to get destroyed and become another statistic like everybody else. So many people are statistics today. You ask them what happened to you. Oh, this one did this to me. Why, why, why you never recovered? Because that spirit defeated them. They was not in the spirit. They didn't know what to do. They ended up a victim of Satan. Don't end up a victim of Satan. Heed these words of your father. Those that don't fear God are dangerous to your life. When you fear God, protect your fear of God. Don't let nothing destroy your fear of God and keep on fearing God and fulfilling what he tell you to do. A lot of times, God will even test you. Are you going to listen to Satan or are you going to fulfill what I told you to do? Are you going to complete the assignment or are you going to stop because you're trying to keep people in your life? You're going to have to choose Jesus at one point in your life. You're going to have to make a decision. Whose side are you on? Whose side, which kingdom have you chosen? It's not worth it to lose everything that God has given to you and what God has promised you to listen to a lie. It's not profiting. Make a decision. I'm telling you right now, saints. Make a decision that you are going to follow through with Jesus for the rest of your life and you're not going to change because of people. People are going to fail you. They are going to betray you and they are going to shock you with their reactions. But don't change your loyalty to Jesus. You got to move on and you got to stay focused on loving him because you ain't going to stop loving him for nobody. You're not, you're not going to stop loving him for nobody. I don't care who it is. I'm the type of person saying, I don't even fool. I don't even fool with uh, natural family members. Because there was nothing going to stop me from loving Jesus. There was no advice. There was no instruction. There was no door that I was going to let even be accessible to me. That was going to make me miss my anointing. This glory carrying anointing. I, it was nothing going to stop me. And I'm more so strong in this today than ever before. So saints, the fear of God. If you don't see this in people, you're going to drain yourself trying to help them. You're going to drain yourself trying to teach them the right way. 
You're going to drain yourself trying to help them not to go to hell. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. You have done your part to give an opportunity for God to deliver them. But now, it's up to them. Be free from what other people decide to do with their lives. Be free. A lot of times you live your life so burdened down about what other people are doing. Let them do what they have to do. When you know what's best, you often try to guard people because you know that disaster. The Bible said, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. But when you deal with God, make the necessary steps and stick with the Holy Spirit.